All right, welcome to this video. This is uh, hashtag Bill Gates walks into a bar. Well, this is my SS Math, and I'm Mr. Myasis, and I'm going to talk to you about measures of center and why this is kind of a uh, beginning of a joke, a punchline. So we've got my little picture here, and I'll show you what happens. All right, so um, we're going to skip that video. So we've got measures of center, or central tendency. Um, when we're describing where most of the data are, we want to quantify that a little bit, and we can use three ways to quantify that. The first is being the mean. So the mean is the average of the data set, and what we do is we just add all the terms together and divide by the number of things we have. That is n. We also have the median, and the median is the middle term. So it's it divides the data in half. It's the 50th percentile, and we can find that by finding where the middle value of all the data are. If we have an even number of items in our data set, then we're going to take the middle two terms, add them together, and divide by two. The other one is the mode. Now, we don't really use the mode all too often, but it is our most common value in our data set, and it does tell us sometimes um, what's going on in the center. Sometimes if we have bimodal data, then that tells us that something else is going on that we might want to block uh, or stratify our data our data next time when we or when we're doing our analysis so we won't often use the mode as our measure of center we'll stick to our mean and our median depending on the shape of our distribution so let's talk about first of all we want I want to give you the formulas for population and sample mean those are two different things right the population is everybody so we're talking about the entire population we use this the Greek symbol mu for our population mean and it's the sum of our values divided by n. This would be kind of hard to get, right, unless we have a small population. Our sample mean is, again, um, the sum of our values divided by n. But this time we're talking about a sample of the population, and we call that x bar. All right, so let's look at an example. We have salaries of employees at a local major chain coffee shop. And these are the, the hour, dollars per hour that they make. We're going to go and determine the mean, median, and mode. So the first thing we have to do is we have to put these in order from least to greatest. So I'll take those data and I'll put them in order. So here they are in order. And then what we need to do to find the mode is we just look at the most common value. So we look through these and see which one's the most common. In this case, we have two that are the most common. Now I only put 9.75, but we actually have $9. So $9 and 9.75 are the modes so we have two modes it is bimodal 9 and 9.75 so again if you're watching this without sound you might want to turn it on but then again if you're watching it without sound you don't know that I'm saying that to turn it on with sound so that would be kind of weird um, anyway number three the next thing we do is to determine the median we find the middle number so we're gonna count there are 10 values here so I'm gonna have to take half of 10 which is 5 that means I'm going to look at the fifth term in my data set. The fifth term and the sixth term because we've got an even number. So if I counted one, two, three, four, five, and I counted one, two, three, four, five, there's nothing right in the middle. So I'm going to have to take the fifth and the sixth term, add them together, and divide by two. That's what this looks like, and I got 9.875 as my median. To find the mean, I add up all these terms together and divide by the number of things, which is 10. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get 10.15 as my mean. Okay, so um, that's my x bar. X bar. So according to the U.S. Census Bureau in 2014, the average household income was 72,641, compared to the median household income, 51,939. So why do you think these are so different? And which one is a better measure of the U.S. income, of U.S. household income? So think about that for a second, and then I'll explain why, which one we want to use. So let's take a look at these. I have three companies, um, A, B, and C. And what you can do here to make this a little more interactive, you can make a relative frequency histogram for each of these. Remember, relative means percentages. And see what the shape looks like. And find the mean, median, and mode for each of these, either by hand or using some sort of technology. Um, in my class, we'll use a TI Inspire, and I'll show you how to find all these terms just by using the Inspire with a couple of uh, short, easy, quick buttons. But we'll do that in class. Uh, or I'll 
but I'll put a video maybe sometime later. But uh, go ahead and try that and then go on to the next, um, maybe pause it right now. Okay, hopefully you pause it. Now let's take a look at the next slide here. So I've done that. I've created my histograms. Uh, these aren't relative frequencies. These are just frequencies. Uh, but I've calculated the mean, median, and mode for each of those. And you notice the modes are all the same. The medians are all the same. But the mean are different. Not only that, but the shape of each distribution is also different. In fact, the shape of company A is skewed to the left. And skewed to the left data, if you notice here that the mean is 41.75, which is somewhere around here, the median, which is 44, is bigger than the mean. And that's because the mean is being pulled by these outliers. So the mean is very susceptible to outliers. So when we have skewed data that's skewed to the left, the mean is going to be less than the median big big idea there guys if you want you can pause it and write down exactly what I said when the data are skewed to the left the mean is smaller than the median all right well, what about the symmetric data well notice here that these data are symmetric right and what do we notice about the mean and the median they're equal so in fact yes when the data are symmetric the mean and the median are going to be equal or very close to being equal. We want to know something about the, the variation, but um, in this case, these two guys are exactly equal. We have a nice symmetric data distribution here. What about this last one? Company C, their salaries are skewed to the right. Well, in skewed to the right, you should notice that our mean is 47, which is about right here, and our mode I'm sorry, our median is 44, which is smaller than our mean. So in this case, the mean is being pulled up by these high outliers, and our mean is going to be greater than our median. So which one is better to use when we're talking about the household income? Well, since our mean can be skewed by high outliers or low outliers, most of our data can be better explained by our median. So we're going to use medians when we're talking about skewed data to describe its center because it's not as affected by it's not affected by skewness where the mean is is affected by these outliers. So we do not want to use the mean, but when we're talking about symmetric data, it is more appropriate to use the mean as the measure of center. So what happens here folks? The joke is Bill Gates walks into a bar and wow, look at that. On average, everyone in the room is suddenly a millionaire because what's going to happen? Bill Gates' billion dollars is going to pull the average salary up and because now we have very skewed data because of the outlier. All right, so there we go. The point of this video, again, was measures of center and that you understand the, the relationship between the mean and the median and the shape of the distribution of data. All right, we'll talk to you soon, folks. Goodbye.